excited to be here. My name is Connor McGrath. I'm your penultimate comedian of the evening. I will tell you a few things about myself over the next 14 and a half minutes of stage time that I have. My name is Connor McGrath. I come from the Deering Center neighborhood of Portland, Maine. We are in Portland, so there's not a lot of recognition applause, pray for that. I know that, but we live here, fuck you. Uh, from the Deering Center neighborhood of Portland, Maine, and I have Asperger's Syndrome, which is on the autistic spectrum. Uh, sometimes joke uh, bookers say, don't do that joke. It makes audiences feel awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> and I say, you know what is awkward and uncomfortable? Having Asperger's syndrome. I'm just trying to relate stories of my life to the audience, like any other comedian. <laughs> I uh, get some questions sometimes about having Asperger's syndrome. Uh, one of them is a lot of people ask me if I'm a savant, if I'm a genius, if I know a lot about certain intricate subjects. If I'm a savant, a genius who knows a lot about particular intricate subjects, like Connor, do you know, are you a savant? Do you know a lot about the Euro rail, the rail system of Europe, the rails, the trains of Europe? Do you know a lot about the Euro rail? Do you know a lot about the international court of law at The Hague? <laughs> Do you know a lot about Mozart and Brahms and classical composers? And I say, it's not quite the case. I know less about the Euro Rail and the International Court of Law at The Hague and Mozart and Brahms and more about Greyhound bus lines, who wrestled in every intercontinental title match at WrestleMania and the insane clown posse. I have what you call low-class, high-functioning autism. That's... Sometimes people ask me if I, uh, if I understand social cues, social cues, the unspoken conversation that it's very easy for a lot of, uh, some neurotypicals, that's what we call non-autistic people in our community, to understand the unspoken social conversation. Can you pick up on social cues? I'm like, I'm getting a lot better at picking up on social cues through a lot of just hanging out and being social at comedy shows and just learning about people. I can now pick up on social cues. Uh, problem is, they're from 10 years ago. That's when I, a little bit delayed reaction. But I, uh, I was just thinking back to August of 2006 the other day, because it was August 2016 the other day, and uh, thinking about Daring Drama Summer Boot Camp. And uh, we were rehearsing some scenes, and some uh, lady, nice young lady, and the, that was in the Daring Drama Club with me, decided to sit in my lap. <laughs> I was thinking back at that small moment, and I was thinking, Huh, that girl probably would have had sex with me because no woman over the age of 15 ever sits in a man's lap unless it's Santa Claus or she wants to have sex with him or she's getting paid to or she's getting paid to have sex with Santa Claus. Those are the only... And we weren't doing Miracle on 34th Street that fall, so I think that girl wanted me to sling the D. But oh, to... I'll, let, I'll let that soak in a little bit. Sling the D. Use that one. Uh, it's not a Conor McGrath creation. I, like, I got a credit to somebody on the internet. I don't know who. Uh, I all, but all I could think of back in August of 2006 when that girl sat in my lap, at the time, all I could think of was, huh, you know, I might be socially awkward, but at least I know that you're supposed to sit in chairs and, and not... not and not in other people's laps without asking them first. It's, it's not like the auditorium is particularly crowded. The 
during high school auditorium was never crowded, but especially during drama boot camp. <laughs> Plenty of available seating options. Now she just chooses to sit in my lap with no provocation. Now I have a very awkward erection, and we have to rehearse a scene from Godspell. <laughs> And it's very wrong for my character. <laughs>